Welcome to Chaos and Climate. My name is Frank Mittlerner and I'm a professor and air quality specialist in the Department of Animal Science at UC Davis. Over the last 30 years I have lived and worked all over the world in many developing countries and of course also in the developed world. And I have witnessed many places where food is scarce, where people are hungry. And I have lived in many places where the opposite is true, where we have super abundance of food. The question is, how can we get knowledge and technology from those places who do have it to those who don't? And pretty much work on a new green revolution. I know that sounds like a big term, but that's really what I mean. We need to make transformational changes globally to satisfy the 2050 challenge, which by the way, is not created equal throughout the world. There are places such as Asia and Africa where human population is going through the roof. But South America, North America and Europe are pretty stable. So again, we have to think about how we get information from one place to another. And I will do my part to make that happen. So how do we achieve a climate smart agriculture? I think it's really important that we always consider efficiencies because efficiencies and emissions are directly related. By doing this we can focus on solutions and that's what I'm all about. Solutions that allow us to further shrink the environmental footprint of livestock. If you want to reduce your environmental footprint, then reducing your animal source food consumption will not get you there. I know some people will want you to believe that, but the reality is different. It has to be understood that we can make further gains in livestock production. There's no question about it. We have shown it over the last decades that we are capable of drastically improving the way we produce food. And that has equally, at equal rates, reduced the environmental footprint. But at the same time, we have to acknowledge the achievements that we have already. And those are the envy of the world. People from all over the world come to a place like this here in California and want to see, want to witness what is possible. So I want to work hand in hand with the farmers because they're the ones that understand the system, that are the real experts as to how to produce milk, how to produce meat, how to put all of this together, the entire system, from soil to plants to animals to climate, and how to operate that in a way that they can meet their bottom line and societal needs. It is also very important for us to be honest as to who the main culprits of environmental harm are. So I know it's not very convenient for you to know that it's your transportation choices or the fact that you run your air condition all day. I understand that, believe me. But it is our responsibility to find out what the main impacts are and to lower those foremost and then work our way down the list. The dairy industry, the livestock sector in general is doing their part. California is currently going through a historic change. Unprecedented efforts are made to further reduce the carbon footprint of dairy and livestock. The goal is a 40% reduction of methane to be achieved in the next 11 years. And I can tell you that only happens when everybody, all players, work hand in hand. This is not the responsibility of a dairy farmer alone. This is a societal responsibility where agencies, industries, environmental justice groups, scientists work together with a common goal in mind. I'm really encouraged to see that here in California the various parties have understood that they have to work together and they do. Everybody now knows that finger pointing at a farmer does not get you anywhere. And always remember that if you point your finger at somebody else, three fingers point back at you. The answer is not less farming. It is smarter farming, more sustainable farming. By assisting our farmers and ranchers to make full use of all their production strategies, technologies and so forth, 
we will be able to satisfy the nutritional needs of our growing global population while protecting all the natural resources we have.